everyone and welcome back to Healthy Kitchen 101. Today we're going to be looking at the Breville Smart Oven Pro. It's a large convection toaster oven with clearly a lot of attention to details in design and usability features. But what about its cooking performance? To find out we apply our four curated tests to see how well the oven performs. Our tests include toasting two batches of four slices of bread back to back, baking a nine inch pizza, roasting a three pound whole chicken, and baking 12 ounces of frozen fries. Now, let's get to it. Test number one, toast or toasting bread, 6.8 out of 10. The first thing we need to do is make sure all eight slices of bread are roughly the same weight. We then place the first batch of four on the wire rack and slide them into the tray level two. We determined that the toast level 5, which is 5 minutes and 13 seconds on the timer, was the best option. At this level, the toast had a perfect golden brown color around the center of the oven. However, it was lighter the further it got to the rear, so we could only give it a 7 out of 10 for even surface color. The unevenness also translated to the texture, where the toast achieved great crispiness in the golden brown areas, but got softer in the lighter areas. This resulted in a 6.5 out of 10 for taste from our chef. Our head chef determined they would be good to have with omelettes and sandwiches. They could be served with soups or eggs benedict, but would make a perfect pairing. We placed the second batch of four in immediately after the first one. We chose level five again, whereupon the oven automatically deducted the timer to three minutes and 42 seconds. Because the oven was already hot, the second batch showed an increase in evenness for both surface color and crispiness, deserving a 7 out of 10. This batch would be more suitable for soups. Test number 2. Baking pizza, 6.8 out of 10. To conduct our pizza test, we first need to preheat the Breville to an internal temperature of 450 degrees F. We didn't use the pizza presets because they didn't include the correct size for our choice of pizza. It only took around 11 minutes and 20 seconds, whereas the average toast ovens take approximately 50 minutes or more. After preheating, we place the pizza on a pizza pan into the oven at the tray level 2. Thanks to the oven's strong power output and convection setting, it only took 4 minutes to bake a 9-inch thick crust meat pizza. This was extremely fast and deserved a 10 out of 10, according to our data on average toaster oven performance. However, the pizza still had a problem with cooking evenness. A quarter of the entire crust was golden brown, but the rest of it lacked color. As you can imagine, the golden brown part was crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, while the lighter area was simply soft throughout. Thus, we could only give the crust a 6 out of 10. Issue applied to the toppings, which had a nice caramelization where the crust was golden but not much in a substandard area. 
the cheese was also not quite melty, so the toppings also got a 6 out of 10. Altogether, our chef gave the pizza another 6 out of 10 after tasting it. We chose not to increase the cooking time of the pizza, as it could result in burning the part of the crust and toppings that were already properly baked. Test number 3. Roasting a whole chicken, 7.5 out of 10. For this test, we preheat the brevet to an internal temperature of 350 degrees F, which took only roughly 7 minutes and 14 seconds. We placed a 3 pound chicken in a belly up position onto the broiling rack and baking pan combo on tray level 1. We flipped the chicken after the first 40 minutes. Some of the skin on the back of the chicken got stuck to the broiling rack. The brevet took one hour to roast the chicken to a desirable color, which was our standard for an 8 out of 10. The skin overall had a golden color, especially at the wings and the tips. However, it still had some very light areas. The skin was soft and didn't crisp up much, despite having the convection fan deployed. Thus, we gave the skin a 7 out of 10. The oven was able to maintain a good internal temperature, so the chicken was cooked all the way through, leaving behind no pink spots. However, the cooking time was a little long, so the chicken's internal temperature ended up at 198 degrees F, which was higher than the recommended 180 degrees F by the USDA. We gave the doneness of this chicken an 8.6 out of 10. Nonetheless, the meat wasn't dry, and combined with the skin, it was enough to get a 7 out of 10 for taste from our chef. Test number 4. Baking fries 6.1 out of 10. To prepare for our baking fries test, we need to preheat the review to 400 degrees F, and it takes only 10 minutes sharp. When the temperature is reached, we take 12 ounces of fries out of the freezer and spread them evenly onto the broiling rack and baking pan combo. We then slide everything onto the tray level 2.
Despite the power draw of 1,800 watts, the preview didn't perform as well in baking fries as many toaster ovens with the same output. Looking at the results from the Ninja Food XL Pro, our assumption was that the broiling rack wasn't as efficient for this purpose as an air fry basket. We didn't turn on the frozen foods toggle because we needed to keep track of the exact cooking time. We gave the fries a toss once after the first 10 minutes as we normally do. However, at 20 minutes in, we found the fries still lacking in color, so we gave it another toss. In total, the oven took 24 minutes to bake, which wasn't very fast. Compared to many other toasted ovens we've tested, it could only get a 6 out of 10 for cooking time. The fries came out with uneven coloring, scoring a 6.5 out of 10. Most of the thinner fries had a pretty good golden color, while most of the thicker ones had a much lighter color. To the same degree, the fries had different texture throughout earning it a 6 out of 10 for this testing component. The pieces with a golden color were crispy outside and soft inside, while the lighter ones were mostly just soft all the way through. With all of that in mind, our chef couldn't give a higher score than 6 out of 10 after tasting the fries. In conclusion, the Preview Smart Oven Pro's cooking performance was subpar compared to its premium design and usability features, but it's far from bad. We deem the oven worthy of an overall 7.7 out of 10, which unfortunately isn't enough to make it into our top list. If you also want to check out how we test the oven's design and usability, head over to our article on healthykitchen101.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.